Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a round table event here on the Homeway from YouTube channel. Um, we're joined by Dark Things and Jen on the panel, and myself, and we are talking to the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, Zero, the gaming kaiju. Zero, how are you doing, man? I'm doing really good, mate. How are you going? Yeah, doing good, doing good. And we've been we've been wanting to do this for a little while now, so I'm glad we've got the time. I'm glad we sorted it out schedule wise. Um, he, you you just rolled out of bed, man. So like, <laughs> happy Monday to you. <laughs> yes, eight o'clock in the morning. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been excited to do this too. Um, yeah. So it's good that we've finally been able to knuckle something down and and get it going. For real, for real, super, super excited, and you know we're we're here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ask you all these questions. We're gonna we're gonna put you on the spot. Um, so I think the first question really is, you know, what what made you start your channel? What 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 gave you the motivation to be a gaming, you know, YouTuber and all that kind of stuff? Like, what what what's your motivation? What's your passion? Um. It all started really um, just as a concept of myself and my friends being able to share um, moments together from the games we were playing. At the time, we were playing um, Grand Theft Auto V Online a lot. Yeah. Um, and originally, the channel wasn't just going to be my own. The mm. concept was we were going to collectively have uh one channel to upload to and we would individually have our own identities to that but we would upload as a collective um unfortunately i was the only one uploading to that channel mm -hmm. for the beginning of and yeah. um i kind of took it off on my own yeah. it's just developed as it went on um it was kind of just as i said in the beginning it was just a passion project where um we wanted to make sure we had memories of the the funny moments and stuff we were capturing um but as time has gone on i've really developed a a love for entertaining people mm. and um i think that also comes from uh, a background of having suffered from mental illness for quite some time mm. um i've used youtube as a creative platform to not only distract myself but my philosophy as a content creator has always been if i can bring happiness to somebody's life on days where i struggle to find happiness in my own mm -hmm. um i feel a huge sense of accomplishment um having done that and um you know getting comments from people um saying that you know they really love what i'm doing you know they love my energy you know that really keeps me going so um it's definitely been a transformative experience from start to finish because i started about probably seven or eight years ago give or take yeah. but it's only probably been the last four to five years that it really clicked with me that i wanted to do this you know full time i wanted yeah. to do this properly so the if you go back to the earlier days it was very like um scarce uploads here and there and the quality wasn't all that high but yeah. then there's kind of a point in time where the should you know the trajectory just goes from plateauing to going up i feel because i i started taking things a little bit more seriously so you obviously start investing more time and more effort so yeah. um yeah yeah that, that's where it all began um and i'm glad i went under you know went under that shift because um uploading content today is um is something that i i, I love doing i've got such a huge passion oh, for it. Yeah. so um yeah so yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. And you can see the passion that you do in your videos. You know, you can see the enthusiasm, you can see the, the joy that you have for doing it and think of everything like that. And I mean, yeah. I've always said, like, <clears throat> for my own personal, like, and like if I'm watching someone and they're enjoying the content they're making, then I'm I'm going to enjoy it because, you know, it, it does come through the screen in that way. And it, it's it's good that, you know, that you're you're still enjoying it even to this day because like people fall off people give up and especially when you've been doing it for so long you said like you're doing it like seven years so like yeah that i mean a lot of people fall off within like the first couple and it's like ah. but it, it can clearly see that you're you, you're still enjoying it you're still bringing new new content you're still bringing new you know your comedic your comedic value your you know your 
your own twist to everything, which is which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, like <clears throat> I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's one of them. Like I feel like along with content creation, like do you feel it's saturated within the gaming world, in like the gaming community? Do you feel like you're trying to compete against everyone, or do you feel like you're kind of set your own kind of like grounds within it? In the beginning, um, I would probably say when I when I went uh, from just you know uploading for a couple of people to then getting some subscribers and then realizing people were wanting to watch what I was doing. Um, in the beginning, I was really focused on numbers. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the gaming niche is um, not as niche as some people. Yeah. Um, care to admit, you know, it's probably the most saturated, um, or if not one of the most saturated, uh, kind of areas of YouTube. Everybody's doing it, um, especially through that COVID period, um, yeah. when people started streaming and everything else. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, I've learned to not get hung up on the numbers, not so much now. Yeah. Um, I just do it because I love doing it, and I know, you know, um, you've got to learn to walk before you can run. So. Mm -hmm. You're going to have days where you don't get the numbers you're looking for. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you're going to have some days where the numbers are going to boom. Yeah. Um, and I think the introduction of things like shorts and stuff has really helped my channel out a lot. Um, yeah. Just being able to give like little previews and share little, you know, tidbits about what I do mm -hmm. kind of opens up the door to bringing people in. Um, I, I feel the gaming niche as a whole, though, is only going to get more saturated as time goes on yeah. um so it's always going to be an uphill battle for somebody who has a passion for gaming and wants to upload gaming content but yeah. um if you can get your i know youtube is kind of a numbers game because you are at the end of the day if, you, if you're looking at doing it as a full-time thing um yeah. and you're really driven to do it it's going the numbers are going to matter um if you're yeah. just doing yeah. it as a passion project and you know you're just uploading for the hell of it maybe not so much but yeah. um I feel there's always going to be competition and I feel that competition in some aspects is going to make you better because you're going to see all the other content people are putting out and it motivates you to improve your own content as well because you're trying to stand out amongst the crowd. So yeah, that's kind of why I feel my content a little bit has shifted um, in formatting and um, just little things here and there that I do now that I didn't do say, you know, a year, two years ago. Yeah. Um, that have become more synonymous with myself and mm -hmm. now people recognize things that I do as as my thing. Yeah. Um, which I think really helps you as a as a brand and as an individual. So um I'm still gonna keep uploading content as for as long as I can. Um but yeah, I feel if you're getting into the game now, um you've got to get into the game in the mindset of knowing that um you're running a million mile race against millions of other people and, oh yeah yeah you know you're gonna fall over sometimes mm -hmm. um you know you're gonna stumble but just stick with it if you've got the passion to do it you'll you'll get to where you want to be that's it that's it. it it's it's all about the passion it's all about if you get to, if you if you do get hung up on the numbers then that, that i feel that's where you're gonna trip up over yourself and everything like that like i mean i feel like people yeah. who who do want to upload to youtube always have that in the back of their minds like this can be something, even if it does start as a hobby or like a passion, you know. But at the end of the day, as long as you're enjoying it, as long as you're putting your own twist on it, I mean, that'd be, you know, thousands of people in, in the gaming community are going to play the same game. You know, they're all going to play the newest, newest game. Like I was watching your Pal World videos and instantly there was other ones that were playing Pal World that like popping up on my feed was like, I don't want to watch any of these people because a I don't know I don't zero. yeah I, I want zero like I don't what I don't I'm not gonna watch these people I I don't want to I'm not I'm more interested in your 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 take on it your 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 commentary than I am in the game like the way yep. the way you present the games and things like that it, it you know the way you know some people some of my favorite content creators. Like they've been, the 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 I watch them for for them, not for the content they create, but for because I've learned to appreciate them as people, for what their you know their their 
presentation style, all that kind of stuff. And same goes to like any and you know anyone in in like the WLC or anything like in here. Like I watch specific people because I enjoy how they present themselves, how they present their information. And I watch I watch the same stuff. Like I watch like five or six videos of the same thing because I enjoy the people that present it. Um, yep. Um, I, I, I'm rambling on much. Doug, have you got any questions? Well, first of all, hey man, good to see you. Mm -hmm. um, big fan. Likewise. Always, Thank you. Uh, make sure that I watch your video. I'll try to let you know how much I appreciate what you put out. Um, I want to resonate with what you said about being passionate about what we do here. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely shows in everything you do. But I think I've said that to you like over and over and over again. And there's no one like you. Yep. You're irreplaceable. It's definitely your brand. People are going to come to your channel to see what you like, what Zach says, what you have to offer. Um, and I joined up and started watching you, joined up this um, home away from YouTube right around the time the COVID scene started, well, probably just a little bit before that bubble, but right around that time. And I think some of the first videos I started watching of yours were the uh, L.A. Noir, I think it was. Mm, it's like yeah, an L.A. Yeah. Noir. I was watching that pretty heavily. Man, I got so wrapped up into that. I was so in, like, oh, man, that's what's like. This guy's just resonating with me. So I think it is true. Um, and what you say, so you have a pearl of wisdom that you're offering to people out there watching this. It is that million mile march with another million people. And um, your passion is what's going to carry you through. Just face it, there are so many detractors out there that if you're just in it for monetization and you're not in it for the actual art of crafting, uh, something that people are going to want to watch. The numbers are not always going to be there, like you said. Yeah. You no, know, they're yeah. going to balloon one day, other day. A video is going to do dismal. Um, just from my own personal experience, you know, I hit a topic that was hot. Some of my videos, first videos, getting thousands of views. I'm like, oh, I'm excited. And then as I move to another topic, the numbers go down. And you're like, oh, wait a second. Was it under, no, it's not really meant to be doing anything different. It's that people aren't as intrigued with maybe the topic that I, or like a game that someone is playing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like to Zach's credit, I remember uh, what he said. He said, you know, um, people come, he didn't want to go watch anybody else about PAL. He wanted to watch you. Same. I was like, no, I'll just wait. Zero's going to have a video come out about PAL. I'm going to get caught up in that. Yeah. I'll just wait. I don't, I want to hear from Zira. You'd be like, you're my trusted source on lots of different games um our style of content um because like i remember you know it's not always the best thing to do to play a game just because it's the hot commodity I remember i learned that the hard way mm -hmm. right uh, when valhalla came out my son and i were convinced oh let's do valhalla everybody's gonna want to watch it but not when there are a million other people playing the game at the same time promoting it at the exact same time yeah and we weren't doing it any differently, right? That was another thing with our channel. Like, what are we doing different? Not really anything. So why would people tune into us? Yeah. No, I don't know. And, and I, be different. I think, the, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the issue with like the newer games as well from like the the bigger content creators like PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, the the big ones, they're going to get the game first. They're going to get the, the, the release like two, three days early so then they can showcase it. So by the time smaller creators get the game they've already completed it so like people have already watched that it's 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 over for them they're <laughs> like i'm ready for the new one i'm ready for the next one so it, it is in that sense it's it's hard to keep up with that, i think and like you know you play I, i've always said when i used to do gaming and stuff like play games that you that you love or play games that you've been wanting to try you know, um, your current series, the Retro Re Rewind, is Pokemon Coliseum. I love that game. That is, that was one of my favourites growing up. Um, and I haven't watched your series yet. I'm waiting for you to finish it so I can binge it because I want to see your. Yeah. I want. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting to see how you find it from start to finish because I've played that game. I know that game like the back of my hand. It was like one of the first games we got on the GameCube and. Chef's kiss, hundred percent. So I am looking forward Absolutely. to watching that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I have a question. Mm -hmm. 
have a question. Um, not too difficult, but Zach and I were in conversation yesterday and we were talking about routines, right? Things that people do. Um, and we were specifically talking about what we do to get ready when we're actually getting ready to do a video. Mm -hmm. Like Zach says, he likes to look the freshest. I know it's the same for me. And I try to go through a routine before I get started. Do you have a routine for, for you get started for a video that you like to do? Just something that you do to make sure that you feel ready and pumped up and ready to go? I um I love playing a little bit of music and just mellowing out a little bit before mm -hmm. I get in the zone, kind of just set the mood. Um, you know, I always go through a process of making sure that everything behind me is looking okay, if the camera is all good, you know, the lighting, everything else. But yeah. I think what really sets the tone for me and the personality that um, comes through is getting myself pumped up by listening to music I enjoy and kind of finding my center in that essence um but what really excites me as well about just gaming in general um is just diving on into something that i've never played before and nine times out of ten um that is the case outside of retro rewind um everything i've been doing minus maybe a game here or there is always fresh yeah um some of the retro games i play are games from my childhood mm -hmm. um but as zach just pointed out with the pokemon coliseum playthrough i'm currently doing that's completely blind it's something i didn't play as a kid so um that in itself kind of helps as routine in getting me prepared because i'm excited to sit down and and record what's going to happen next because i don't know what's going to happen next yeah. and just that that innocence and that um you know childlike wonder of of what's in the unknown mm -hmm. um really prepares me as well but i definitely feel music is my is my main drive um i'll sit here and put a couple of songs on and just kind of find the groove um and i'll even play different types of music depending on the game i'm going to be recording just to see if i need to find a different energy level if that makes sense so oh, with yeah. the suicide yeah. squad that i've been recording with a couple of my friends mm -hmm. um you know i'll play um a little bit of heavy metal just to get the the blood pumping a little bit um if i'm doing a more mellow kind of playthrough i might do some you know some slow jams or something like that it's 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 a process but um uh, music has always driven me creatively um mm. even outside of content creation um whether it's with my writing or i'm doing some art or something like that it's always just that's been my one grounding thing and i always told of that so yeah. um, i think it's important to have routine and have that one thing um that helps you prepare um because there's going to be some days where you don't want to do content you know content mm -hmm. creation especially if you find yourself in one of those ruts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah you know um i've i've taken a step away a few times in the last 12 months um you know be it a couple of days from uploading because i feel you need to have a, a step back sometimes so even having that as part of a routine um and just knowing in the back of your head it's okay to step away mm -hmm. um you know the people that support you are going to be there to support you regardless of whether you want to take a little bit of time off and you you know so um definitely feel routines important um do you guys have particular routines yourselves that you guys divulge with uh yeah uh, we were talking about this last night actually as well so like for me personally i like to i like to get myself so i have like a routine so i get Make sure my, my beard is nice. Make sure my head's trimmed. Make sure I've got a nice outfit on. I, I always spray. I don't... You can't smell me, but I need to smell nice. Um, I, again, same. I, I like to put music on. I like to listen to a bit of music. Um, like, music's helped me throughout the years with, like, my mental health and everything. So, music is a, it's a massive thing for me. Um... There isn't a time in the day where I'm not listening to music unless I'm busy doing, unless I'm like recording something. Music is always on in the background, regardless. Um, and and yeah, it's it's one of them where I like to I like to prepare myself. I like to just relax, just take a moment, and just like this is what we're doing. Um, I'm very structured with what I like to record as well, so I have like a specific like. This is what I'm doing today. That 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 that. I like to have it kind of like, not by the minute, but kind of like I know where I'm at in like the day of like right. I need to record this, or I'm gonna edit this today. Um, because 
I, I obviously with work and things like that, I'm very finite with the amount of time that I have during the weekend. So it's like I need to be as productive as possible for like to get everything sorted, get everything done. Um, so it's like it's one of them. It, it's it's routine for me. Um, it might seem crazy, but like it works for me, and, and that's all that matters. Um, Doug, how about you? Your routine? It's been a well, it's been a fair stretch since I've done any real video game content. Mm. Um, my son and I are going to get back to that, but like, if, you know, for yeah. Reader Digest versions, we had to go to a completely different channel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we're starting that journey over again. But for like game content, definitely music um, is something that he and I will both listen to. And because we bounce off each other when we do our gaming content, because that's a duo type thing. Yeah. We both have to be feeling one another. So yeah. Um, making sure that there's no beef between us before we yeah. on camera, yeah. <laughs> uh, is a, was important too because that went sideways once. Um, but just making sure in the gaming that I'm in a space where I'm ready to have fun. Oh, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, and That's the so. music helps with that. Now, when it comes to the other channel that I've been pushing now for Gangbusters since, like, December, um, the present day, oddly enough, I will listen to, if if, if I'm going to listen to music, I'm going to be listening to some probably some pretty eerie type stuff. Mm. Um, or even soundtracks maybe from, like, or a movie or a mystery touch like that will yeah. help put me in that mindset mm -hmm. um or if it's more of just like a mystery of an unsolved person you know i'll find out go ahead and watch an old episode of unsolved mysteries with robert stack nice um, yeah. just to yeah. kind of um get me there or um i'll just find maybe um there's a youtuber out there i'll plug um, I like watching her content. She doesn't need my help. She's way bigger than I am, but she goes by Seriously, um, and she does a lot of really cool stuff. And so I'll, like, for the same way I did with my gaming, for taking it from, from zero, finding something that was going to make it unique, mm -hmm. a brand, um, I kind of took cues from her about what can I do that's different about my channel mm -hmm. um, in the realm of that. So, uh, so I'll listen to music um i'll watch something that is kind of true crime or mystery related or i'll read yeah uh while i'm listening to music uh you know like the little crime novels mm. type stuff nice, to nice. kind of get me in the mood and i will also quaff my hair <laughs> and you know make sure i'm spraying some banaka i know no one can smell my breath but you know yeah. i don't want them something go through the monitor and offend them yeah. stuff like that, um, to get ready yeah. and i'll do some stretching right um before i get started so you know just little stretches like oh yeah yeah nice, make sure nice. that i'm relaxed yeah because nice like, you know when you're when you're doing narration type stuff mm -hmm. um feeling comfortable it's gonna be yeah because i don't have really anything but the video of my voice selling something mm -hmm. and i'll do like the little vocal exercises like I'll be, I'll be, I'll like make sure that my mouth is moving and I can articulate it. I look ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to have to see me do it while yeah. I'm doing that. But yeah, I go back to the old theater kid and uh, do that stuff too. Nice, nice. Yeah. So I had a question for Zira. Mm -hmm. Go um, ahead, man. Go ahead. You talked about, you know, your journey at the beginning, how you weren't taking it seriously. And then that posture struck and you got serious and things changed. Um, I continue to see your growth. Um, even today, I see you do different stuff. So it's kind of like, okay, he's going with this right now. Um, but to someone who's just getting started out, um, other than it being a numbers game, um, what advice would you give somebody who's starting out? Either be it what they're using to produce the content, like programs or whatnot. What would you? What advice would you give to someone coming into the scene? Okay, um, I definitely feel, uh, as we said, we've been speaking about numbers, I feel that we need to push the numbers to the back of our mics, mm -hmm. um, especially if we're starting off early um, and, you know, you're not going to have... Because I've always felt your first 100 subscribers are the most crucial because I feel that's the that's the hardest number to hit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unless you become an overnight sensation and you upload a video that goes viral and you pick up a ton of subscribers off of it, 
your first hundred is probably going to be the long run in your journey. It took me God knows how long to hit my first hundred, but once I did hit that hundred mark, um, you know, it kind of opened up avenues for me because I didn't think I'd get more than ten subscribers. I honestly thought it was only ever going to be my friends that I was gaming with that were going to be subscribing and watching the content just to help myself out. Yeah. Um, so I think definitely pushing the numbers to the back of your mind and just letting the passion for what you want to do take the lead. Um, social media is something I also recommend um, not relying upon, but using as a tool to promote your content. I didn't do that in the beginning, but now I've opened myself up to um, making sure I upload to Twitter um, or X as it's known now. I make sure I always put something out on that for a new video or if I'm doing a reaction video because I've got a reaction channel on the side as well. Um, I'll always do a little bit of a teaser the, uh, leading up to that video coming out saying, hey, guess what? I've got a reaction video coming out at this time. Swing by and check it out. Um, TikTok's been a big one for me recently too because um, I was uploading YouTube shorts and I was finding that some of them weren't performing as well as I was hoping. And then I figured, well, TikTok is kind of the same platform that YouTube Shorts is offering, just in a different format. So I've transitioned to taking that stuff to TikTok as well. Um, and I've been finding a lot of people have been coming from TikTok to now watch my content. So oh, nice, nice. Um, definitely leaning into promoting on social media is something I highly suggest as well. Again, especially if it's in this gaming niche, mm -hmm. you're going to be, you know, I wouldn't say fighting to survive, but it's very much the, the process of thinking, you know, if you don't try to get ahead of the pack a little bit in some way, shape or form, um, you might struggle to, to break away for that period of time. So you need to really, lend yourself to opportunities like promotion or even with the group we've got here on discord you know being able to um share your content and you know help each other out in that essence as well you know networking um collaboration things like that really do help out and i'm not at all suggesting things like sub for sub or anything like that because no, i've no. always been against that yeah. um that is a that's a trap i fell into early on in yeah. my channel's infancy mm -hmm. um because i didn't realize at the time that it was such a bad thing i thought oh, okay if this person's wanting to support me then i'll support them back but the process of that becomes they're not wanting to support you they just want an extra number for themselves and once they get that number then they've achieved what they're looking for you know you're gonna you, you might have a number on your channel but you're not getting that that metric you're not getting that view yeah. that like that comment that you want to be getting yeah um, so I definitely recommend steering away from that kind of stuff, but don't be scared to network with other people. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I know some people might be against what we do in the, in the discord here, you know, yeah. we're posting our videos up and, and sharing, but we do it in a way that it's not forced. It's something that you can elect to do. Yeah. Um, and you know, I feel that I've made connection with the people that, um, do upload in our group and even on Facebook in some groups I upload to some of those people are now just watching my content as soon as it's uploaded outside of having to post it in those groups because they've come to appreciate the content I'm doing so yeah it's it's just a process of allowing your passion to take the lead don't be scared to you know network with people and broaden your horizons a little bit in that aspect um and I think the biggest thing I would tell people is, and I've touched on it already, um, speaking to the both of you, is to step away if you feel you're burnt out or you need to hit reset. Yeah. Um, the worst thing you want to do is feel that burnout but still try to push content because people mm -hmm. are going to notice that something's up. You know, yeah. They, yeah. They, 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 as, as Zach said, you know, being able to... Um, watch you through a screen you can pick up on the energy that person's putting out uh, mm -hmm. that's a big reason why my content has now shifted to um having a webcam for all the content i do as opposed to just some of the content i was doing um because i feel that way um people can physically see how i'm responding instead of just hearing it in my voice yeah um so you're going to be able to pick up on little things when people are burnt out and and 
in the past, there were some times where I was putting content out there and I was feeling absolutely terrible. Um, and I feel you can pick up on that. So mm -hmm. step away for as long as you need to. Um, yeah. I'm always posting on my community tab if I step away saying, hey guys, sorry, I haven't uploaded, you know, something's going on. I just needed to hit reset. And, you know, everybody just comes back saying, you know, take as much time as you need. You know, you need time for yourself. And at the end of the day, that's what you need to remind yourself. You know, you're doing content creation because you love doing it. Yeah. Um, hopefully you're not just doing it to get monetized or anything like that because I know there are many out there that are only getting into the YouTube game because they want to make money. And I feel that's the worst way to... It's the worst way to drive your content. Oh, yeah, 100%. If you've, yeah. Only got, if you've only got dollar signs in your mind, um, I feel you're not going to get anywhere, especially if you're a brand new channel and you're struggling to get, you know, your first 100 subscribers. You know, you've still got to grind out that extra, you know, couple of hundred to get anywhere. And... Um, I feel you need to have the right motivation, have the right, have the right drive. I don't think money is a drive for content creating or, or live streaming. Um, and not just even in the gaming platform. I just think in general, just oh, creating yeah. content, no. you need 100%. to have, you need to have a passion for it. You, you can't, you can't rely on money coming through because unfortunately, um, I don't think the people realize how, how scarce that money is when you do get to that point oh yeah yeah um you know i've i've been monetized for a couple of years now and i'm thankful for the money that comes through because that money when i do get it funds the next video game i'm going to play yeah um so it's a process where the youtube monetization is continuously allowing me to bring content because i'm putting it straight back into the channel but yeah even then um i've seen comparisons to some other content creating friends of mine that um, are getting a lot more than I am or a lot less than I am. So it's, it's, it's a battle and yeah. people are thinking, Oh, as soon as I'm monetized, I'm going to get hundreds of dollars and yeah. you know, it's going to, it's going to change my life. It really is not going to yeah. change your life at yeah. all. It puts a little bit of extra money in the pocket um, if you're lucky. So don't let money be a drive for what you're doing. Allow 100%. the passion to, to push you through. Yeah. 100%. I like um, that, that last part that you sold, Bjorn, um, the money, not being in it for the money. Oh, yeah. I think that's where a lot of people who come on, <clears throat> like, oh, I'm going to go be a YouTuber and make money. It's going to be the most easiest thing. So many things that go into producing that are not easy if you oh, want to no, succeed. Absolutely not. Produce quality content. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, um, you know. And uh, like you said, routine, being able to step away. One of the things that and I don't know. I I've been on your you know, your YouTube channel several times. I've never seen you have your schedule listed over there. I don't think. Um, for us, we're not choosing to have a schedule so that we have that freedom to step away. I think some people are going to be used to us putting content out like Gangbusters and then taking this step, like you said, away to recharge the batteries. Do you have a set schedule, Zira? I mean, I know you post pretty regularly. Do. But do you have a schedule? I do. So, um. The issue I was having a few years ago was I was uploading so many different games at the one time. I was doing, like, I play one game on a Monday, and then on the Tuesday I was uploading something different, and then on the Wednesday I was jumping back to the game that was going down on Monday, and I feel I was confusing the YouTube algorithm a hell of a lot because that content wasn't getting pushed because I was bouncing around with so many different things. So yeah, I sat down and thought to myself, I've got to really... I've got to really like belt out a, a schedule here. I've got to focus down on what I want to do. And the schedule I've got in place currently is Monday to Friday, I focus on um, one specific uh, modern game. And currently that is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. So that's that period. And then Saturdays and Sundays, I allocate to the Retro Rewind. So on the weekends, we we throw it back to the, the older games and kind of take a step back from what's happening now and appreciate kind of the gaming journey that got us to where we are. Mm -hmm. um, funnily enough, um, I had somebody on TikTok um, call me out because I was uploading Crash Bandicoot, like the original Crash Bandicoot in 2023. Yeah. And he couldn't get his head around the fact that, you know, with all these modern games we have available to us, I was playing a game from the 90s. And, uh -huh. you know, that prompted me to put a video out that, that actually 
went really well, you know, just talking about the fact that uploading older games in the current spectrum, um, if anything, could be beneficial to people who want to step into the gaming niche because you've got such a competition currently for all the newest, hottest games that are coming out yeah. that if you if you take a step back and you want to play something that's a bit older, there's a market for people that'll watch that because like self, there are many games I didn't play as a kid. So, you know, Pokemon Coliseum, for example, that I'm playing now is a prime example of that. Yeah. Um, and I love mixing up content with um, games that I haven't played before because I feel that adds to the, not this just the enjoyment for the people at home, but for the enjoyment myself because mm. I'm experiencing something that... <clears throat> I could have as a child, but now I, I get to as an adult and because I've developed a more analytic kind of mind, I can really appreciate what they were trying to do in that time, making those games and kind of pick it apart internally. Yeah. Um, but I feel scheduling like I have for daily content has pigeonholed me a little bit and mm. it always makes me feel terrible if there's a day that comes around and I don't have content available that um, I'm breaking my unwritten promise to the people that have come to the channel because I'm like, hey, I upload daily. <clears throat> but hang on a minute. Z Zero says he uploads daily, but he doesn't have a video out today. What's going on? So yeah, yeah. I always try to have a recording schedule in place as well mm -hmm. to kind of make sure that I've got X amount of videos done by a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the Suicide Squad series I'm doing now is a prime example because I'm collaborating with two other friends of mine on that. Um, one of which lives here in Australia and I've collaborated with many times before. But this particular series, I'm collaborating with um, Rockstar Pool 69 for the mm. first time. Nice. And he lives he lives across the water. So, yeah. Um, he lives in my neck of the woods. To take... <laughs> yeah, your neck of the woods. So we're doing... Um, recording sessions based upon having schedule both of our time zones in so yeah. um he's jumping on at like 9 10 a.m whereas myself and my other friend we're sitting here at about 9 10 p.m yeah um getting yeah. ready to record and we've got to make sure you know if i've got a five-day block where i'm uploading i've got to make sure okay if we're sitting down for this session we need to record at least five episodes worth otherwise i'm going to not have content and that has happened during this process and yeah. that's no fault of our own we've just had some scheduling issues mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but yeah i definitely think a schedule helps if you want to be if you want to be more full-time and you're taking it seriously um i think putting a schedule out there identifies to the people coming to your channel okay well this is when i can expect this or this is when i can expect that but yeah at the same time um the schedule is something i'm now adhering to more so than i did in the past and i feel if you're going to set a schedule you need to kind of stick to that as best as you can um, yeah. there's no point telling your your viewership that hey you know i'm going to upload on these days but then you don't get content out so i find a lot of people yeah. like oh <clears throat> tuesdays and fridays you're going to get a new video you know doing a couple of days a week in the beginning i think is fine mm -hmm. um don't jump into the rabbit hole so quickly and do daily stuff because that's no no. It's going to burn you out quick, especially if, you, if you're <coughs> just starting. You need to, I feel you need to be established and you need to have that drive enough to want to do daily stuff. Um, and I'm only pushing that because I want this channel to to become something much bigger. I yeah. do have an end goal where I want to be um, and I'm still a ways off from that. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping having a schedule in place um, will help me on that journey. 100%, 100%. Yeah, I, I totally agree with the routine. I, I... Like we, like we were talking about, like we have a routine to get ourselves ready. My routine, like my day, my schedule is a Monday for a video and a podcast. So I, I try and do like two, I do two podcasts every month. I do two videos every month. I try and upload, currently I'm uploading an extra video where it's like a podcast clip to try and get some more little clicks on the videos and things like that to, you know, promote the podcast a little bit more. Podcasts are doing well on my end. Um, it's just a little bit of, you know, some people, you know, to get those extra bits out there that, are, that I feel are more rewatchable than other parts of it. Um, and I'm currently starting a new series, so that's going to be an, another upload day as well. So, I mean, it, like you say, you've got to have the drive to do it. You've got to have the, the, the passion. You've got to have the, the oomph to do it. 
um, and totally agree with like, I mean, bulk recording, obviously to, to finite your time a little bit as well. Um, I, I mean, if you can, if you can do that, like set, set a few hours a day to like do what you need to do and that kind of stuff. So, yep. um, but yeah, I mean, in, in terms of like uploading and things like that, uh, what, what, what do you recommend? Like your, do you, do you recommend, obviously you do daily. Do you find some videos during the week do better than other videos or like, say like a Tuesday does better than a, a, a Wednesday or does it just depend on what you're playing, what you're doing? Like, I think, I think it definitely comes down to what you're playing as well. Mm. Um, and it also comes down to how, how you dress that video. And when I say dress, I talk about how you title it, how, how the thumbnail looks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, because we obviously take things in visually and on a yeah. platform like YouTube, where you're getting so many videos thrown in your face, it's the videos that have visual appeal from that thumbnail that really draw you in um, mm -hmm. or, you know, click baiting some titles. Yeah. Um, because funnily enough, if you look through my metrics, um, the best performing videos on my channel or some of them all have the word sex in the title. <laughs> um, and uh. it's kind of ironic, but... Um, for example, a video I did uh, last year when I was playing um, Bully on the PS2 mm -hmm. for my Retro Rewind. Yeah, yeah. There was an episode where you're tasked to sneak into the girl's dorm oh, and take yeah. a photo of a cheerleader while she's in the shower. <laughs> yeah. Right? So I clickbaited that title with um, taking photos of naked schoolgirls, right? And that <laughs> video did not perform well. It, it, it maybe got... 30 to 40 views but from november last year to now um it has gone from 30 odd views to almost three thousand. it is wow. out of nowhere has just popped yeah. um yeah similarly with my cyberpunk 2077 series i did um if i ever went down to jig jig street and and paid for some services those videos um got thousands of views and yeah. It's really funny to think that something so simple um, draws traction, but I've always made the joke with my friends that sex obviously sells because yeah, every, every time I've used it at pushing point, yeah. um, even if it's for a you know comedic kind of thing, how, how I do it, yeah. um, it definitely outperforms everything else I do. But just um, generally on the, just on as a baseline, I think definitely um, what you choose to upload uh and what you're playing as a gamer definitely drives that. And, you know, my Suicide Squad series, again, I'll, I'll probably point to because it's the most freshest in my mind. Yeah. Um, I've got some videos that, you know, have 100 odd views. And then I've got one random video in the series that only has 30, 40 views. And yeah. I feel that's because that particular video, um, in relation to the other ones, doesn't really have much of a story push and mm. there wasn't really an angle that I could kind of manipulate when promoting that particular video to draw people in. Whereas all the other ones are like, Hey, this new villain's appearing or yeah. we're going to go do this. And it, and it's more appealing in that way because you're, you're trying to draw people in to click. And yeah. if you don't have that clickable feature, mm -hmm. um, that video is going to struggle a bit, but as I just pointed out, some videos you might only have a few views on and then over time they're going to collectively grow. So the That's process it. I've now gotten my mindset into um, is not to worry on the immediate numbers because with time, those numbers will will increase. My oh, Hogwarts yeah. Legacy series, I've seen every video increase hundreds of views over, yeah. over the span of starting that game to now. Nice. Um, so that's definitely um another recommendation i give to any aspiring gamers whether it be starting a channel now or currently in a situation where you've been uploading for a bit and you might be getting caught up on on low viewership mm -hmm. um don't let that immediate number get you down mm -hmm. use it as a tool to drive you forward yeah um you know if you're getting low views on something look internally and ask yourself maybe is there something you could have done better to to push yeah. is that better and mm -hmm. kind of use that as a catalyst to make sure the next video has something a little bit more to offer um and that's what i'm always actively doing i'll always 
kind of reflect on the recording I've done. I'll skip through it all and I'll say, oh, that could have been done a bit better or, you know, there was opportunity to do or say something here and I didn't do so. So yeah. that yeah. then motivates me the next time mm -hmm. to be a little bit more um, uplifted with my energy and kind of a little bit more over the top. So yeah. it might be overcompensating for what we're lacking in a previous video, but I feel it works for me. Yeah. Um, and just the way I kind of banter and and handle myself um in certain situations but yeah um definitely feel i don't think the days of the week maybe time that yeah. you upload mm -hmm. um because yeah. youtube indicated to me that my peak uploading time was between 12 a.m and 2 a.m okay. so i normally set my content to drop about 1 a.m australian mm -hmm. time which yeah. around the world is obviously going to drop at all different times mm -hmm. um and I feel that in its own right compared to what I was uploading a few years ago has definitely improved as well because I didn't have a set time I was uploading. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I drop a video at this time or this time and kind of you could see the views go up and down. So I think um, if you're going to schedule videos, mm -hmm. try to find a sweet spot where you feel you can always have content ready for and yeah. upload to that time because then people start getting in the process of, oh, okay, they're going to drop a video at this time. Mm -hmm. So they kind of start expecting that content to come out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely think um, time more than more, more than the, days day, of the, week. the playing yeah. influence. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I find the time like some videos, like, <clears throat> so I schedule my videos to come out around about 5 PM. So like when people this time are like getting out of work and things like that, or like I try and do it for like Eastern time. So it's like, 12 p.m eastern time so it's like middle of the day for those because i've looked at my analytics and most of my viewers are from america because i do like disney park content i do like a lot obviously i do disney content so it's going to appeal more to the masses of like disney world of like the eastern time I'm like oh why is this british dude talking about my park what, what's going on here um but like i, I feel like the the um you know i've tried loads of different times and i feel like 5 p.m my time like gmt works well for me um it, it, it does it does well to be fair um and talking about the views that just come out of nowhere like my one of my la latest videos did horrible like it, it, it got like five views six views on like it was like a trending topic within like the disney community and i was like okay fair you know maybe it's run its course and all of a sudden I checked my analytics last week and it was like over a hundred views. I was like, that's, there we go. Ding, ding, ding. Like currently sitting at like just short of 250. And I'm like, wow, that came out of nowhere. So definitely yep. if, you know, definitely keep, you know, don't, don't get hung up on the numbers. Um, it, it's, it's really not worth it. It's really not. I, I've been there in the past. Um, as, as you probably all know, this is like my fourth channel because the first one, I I, the, I started doing um, the, well, before it was the, the golf on Disney, it was, um, it was kind of like just a that regular, like, things. yeah, it was that does thing. So that was just an amalgamation of everything. I was like, people need to know everything I'm doing. Like that I didn't, I didn't ever, I, everything was on camera. And then I did the gaming channel and I was like, that was through the COVID and everything like that. I was like, yeah. I'm at home more. I mean, I enjoy playing games, and then I, that kind of like run its course because I was I got back into work and I just didn't have time to play games and record like that. Um, and then I started. I tried, tried to do daily vlogging, and I was like, eh, that lasted about three months. So I was like, this is this is too much. It's too much to handle. I can't do daily stuff, especially with like being at work and like not having the time to do it. And then. I came I came to this one and this 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 routine that I've got works well for me it's you know it's all about finding that life balance like I'm not going to put everything on the line I'm not going to put everything online like I, I don't want to I'm not doing I've learned my lesson from that like you've got to have your own kind of like your own personal time and I guess a question from that is like you know, obviously you, you do gaming and things, you have your reaction channel. I know you have um, a podcast that you've recently started, an AFL podcast, um, which 
of Australian Football League. Is that is that what it stands for, isn't it? Um, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, you know, obviously, you, you've that's your that's your hobbies and things like that. But what do you do? Have you got anything that you do off camera that that do you know that you you, you keep to yourself? Um, just touching on the other two channels I've got, um, I want to just make a point to people mm -hmm. um, at home who might be starting up. Um, if you're going to be a variety channel and you're going to upload different stuff, mm -hmm. make sure you advertise that out of the gate because mm -hmm. the trap I fell into was I've always been a gaming channel mm -hmm. and then one day I felt like doing a reaction video and then those reaction videos started doing better than the gaming stuff. Yeah. And then I started focusing more on reactions and then I feel again, I was confusing my viewership because they've come for gaming content. Then all of a sudden I'm pushing reaction videos out yeah. music and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which made me break away to doing the separate reaction channel. Yeah. Um, which um, has blown up quite quite severely in shorter period of time um it's something i wish i'd done many moons ago mm -hmm. um given the the quick burst um and i think the, the the there's a bigger niche i feel in people wanting to see other people react to things yeah, um, yeah. weirdly enough yeah um, because those videos have been doing exceptionally well mm -hmm. um it took me a couple of years to get to a point where again don't want to talk about money but getting to that point of monetization with my gaming channel mm -hmm. took me such a long period of time um i'm knocking on the door of that with my reaction channel already and it's been 12 months so wow. nice congrats um, man congrats that that yeah, you know awesome. thank you so just make sure that if you want to do different things and you're happy to do it on the one channel do it but don't kind of pigeonhole yourself into doing um, you know, I'm going to be a gamer, but then mixing things up and doing things differently, which mm -hmm. is why I'm doing the AFL channel separately now too, because I do, um, like weekly breakdowns during the season of yeah. how teams performed and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, that's mixing into my gaming content and it confuses the algorithm again. And then yeah. one form of content gets pushed more than the others. So, yeah. um, definitely if you're wanting to do different things, make sure you, you kind of have that mindset that some things are going to perform better than others. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, stepping yeah. away from YouTube, um, I love to write. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone through and gotten qualifications in writing and editing. Um, nice. I used to work as a music journalist. Um, oh, wow. So I'd go out to, to, to live gigs and do reviews, and I'd get um, opportunity to interview some um you know, some band members from around the world from different bands. Oh, wow. To get to listen to some music a little bit early and do some um, album reviews and stuff like that. Wow. That um, is from my childhood that I was able to um, get the chance to work with. Mm. And um, some of their official Wikipedia pages actually have um, some of my quotes, like within oh, wow. their wiki to say that i said x about their album which is really uplifting for me um, yeah. and that's why i said um con content creation for me goes further than youtube because i felt that music journalism was just an extension of my content creating it was just on a different form yeah um and i love the written form i can i can speak anybody's ear off but when it comes to writing i i'm pretty excessive um if i start i can't stop yeah. <laughs> um, I'm in the process of trying to write my first ever novel. Oh, wow. Um, which is going to be great if I can get that going. Yeah. Um, and I study full time as well. So I've got a full time study load. Um, and I'm in my third year currently of uh, studying to become a primary school teacher. Oh, so, wow. Congrats, man. Um, that, that could kind of shift how my content creation mm -hmm. goes moving forward. Because if I end up teaching, then, then obviously that's going to pick up a lot of my time so yeah it yeah. could very well be that my my gaming stuff instead of becoming daily uploads could shift to maybe um live streaming on weekends instead yeah um yeah. but i've still got a couple of years to kind of preemptively prepare for that mm -hmm. but um i'm definitely as excited about the stuff away from camera as i am on camera because i'm always finding myself in positions where i can be creative even with my studies i find ways to incorporate um my content creating especially if it's like oh you've got to do a video presentation 
that's something that I know I can do well because I, I find now I hold myself on camera a lot better than I did a few years ago. Oh, yeah. So yeah. YouTube has given me tools and content creating has given me tools that I can use in everyday life. And um, I don't think people realize that kind of transformative journey. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really thankful for it because I used to be this this shy guy who mm. um you know on in the beginning i was struggling to talk on camera um yeah. was finding myself a lot having to restart recordings because i was stumbling on words or i didn't know what to say and i think if you watched an earlier video of mine compared to now mm -hmm. it almost feels like two different people have uploaded that video yeah um, yeah but it definitely lends itself to how i carry myself in real life um I've got more of an air about myself. Mm. Um, I've got a lot more self-confidence in myself as mm. well. Um, and that that namely comes from, um, you know, comments like what Doug said, he leaves on my videos, you know, talking yeah. about, I think one of the, the most recent uh, comments that I got was uh, something very much along the lines of that if you could um, bottle my personality and, and purchase it, you would. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, things like that. Yeah. carry more than just on the youtube platform oh that yeah really helps oh, yeah. you externally like and it carries yourself so much better um but i'm a busy busy guy so as i said i've got a daily content schedule mm -hmm. set for gaming then i've got the reaction channel which i keep saying oh i'll try to do a video every one to two weeks but it's maybe a month in between videos at the mm -hmm. moment so i'm trying to fix that up yeah and we're two weeks away from the AFL season starting and I haven't <laughs> dropped any content on that channel yet. So I'm kind of in a position where I'm like, I really need to buckle down. Thankfully I've got the next three weeks off um, of my studies because I've finished that um, trimester of teaching. So I'm trying transitioning into the next, but nice. that's when I find I'm at my best recording wise, because I've got that period of time where I'm like, I don't need to dedicate myself to anything else but content creation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm a busy, I'm a busy guy. Yeah. I, I like to keep myself busy and keep keep the cogs turning. Yeah, um, we're very much alike. Anything apart from work that you guys do, you know, you do outside of of YouTube. Um, well, go on, Doug. Go on. Um, actually, the stuff I do on YouTube is what I'm doing outside of work. <laughs> um, it's kind of become my. It's not just my hobby; it's my passion. Because I used to do theater, and I did theater professionally for for a good while, um, repertory regional theater in Denver. And um, I did non like amateur theater in almost every town I lived in for a long time, well into my late twenties. And then life lives you and you don't have opportunity or your schedule doesn't permit you to participate in those things. So YouTube was kind of like my invitation to get a piece of that back. Present. Um, I also can write, um, and with my new channel, the one I've been doing, I am writing almost all the content, um, the script. Um, I'm not big into having AI do the work for me. I want to do it because I think if uh, AI does the work, it's going to come across as disingenuous. Mm. Um, you know, I want me yeah. to be presented. Um, I do find that I like to um, do tabletop gaming with my son, so role playing. You, won't, you don't necessarily see that online, um, but he and I like to do that. Um, I love to eat. <laughs> um, and we we were doing what Zach did also that whole well, let's let everybody see everything we do um, initially, and we kind of stepped away from that as well. But yeah. my son and you know I enjoy my son's company. Um, uh, he, I am his dad first and foremost, but I would also say that he's probably become one of my closest friends. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a friendship there, not just a parent son relationship. And that might seem odd to some people. Um, but you know, like I said, life will life you and you learn to lean on each other through some stuff mm -hmm. and don't yeah. live a, uh, a conventional or traditional life. Mm. Um, so there's just stuff, you know, that's what happens. And then, um, you know, let's see, I like to go for walks. I like to people watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. 
people watching Reed. this one. Um, I I still enjoy the the task not task but you know going to a movie, going to an actual movie theater, smelling the popcorn, sitting down in front of that big screen, and enjoying that um, that context because I. I think that there's a step away from that. I see society turning to streaming at home as opposed to going to the movie theater to watch. I mean, I'm still one of those guys. I liked the the experience of going to a movie theater or to a live production. Yeah. Um, I also like to cook. Um, you know, I love to plan out what I'm going to make, get that recipe together, mm -hmm. going and getting the items, bringing it home and presenting something to for my family to eat and they're going to enjoy and they say oh there's love in that you know there's love in that food like, yeah, i know i put a lot of effort there's love in that but that's not just... <laughs> yes i know there's love in that food um i think the tabletop gaming um is in the works because my son and i are working on our own role-playing game um and uh, i think i'm gonna have somebody who's gonna be helping with miniatures mm -hmm. Like you said, when you network, you meet people. I would have never met that individual outside of the YouTube verse or the Discord groups um, who will be helping with miniatures. And then uh, I think the test group is going to come from people I've networked with and met through Discord and YouTube mm -hmm. um, who would want to play this game. So just kind of that stuff. Um, I like to sing. And uh, I think through something I'm doing with Zach, and uh infamous or roger mm -hmm. um people are going to see the theatrical side of me uh, as well as uh my st i did stand-up comedy for a long time um you know with that it can be dangerous though because i don't have a filter always <laughs> <laughs> so i have to be a little more careful because cancel culture i don't want to get canceled before <laughs> i get established <laughs> but yeah. yeah those are my things you know those are my passions i definitely um Writing, music, tabletop gaming, dining out. Yeah. Nice spending one. time with the wife who just did amazing long yawn over there. Um, <laughs> but that, that's my passion. And then, you know, I also, I think, um, am a cheerleader. I like to network with people, become their friend, and cheer them on. And I think... Um, I wouldn't say it's a hobby, it's just a, something that I am. I am uh, an empath. Mm -hmm. If someone's going through something extra hard, I know that I can maybe push a little hard to be that voice of encouragement in the back of their head to let them know mm -hmm. um, they're going to be okay, they're going to get through whatever it is they're going through. Or if they're just doing amazingly well, just hype it even more. It's like, let's ride this out. Because I'm aware, you know, like I said, life will like you. Um, you go on that roller coaster ride sometimes, and it's those connections that you make with people. Um, has been for me, mm -hmm. even if it's just a, a small word of encouragement, um, that gets you through you know, that day or gets you over the hump or mm -hmm. keeps you motivated to do stuff even when you're not motivated. Like when you know you need to produce content, but you're just not feeling it. Yeah. So maybe you need to step away for a little bit, mm -hmm. but you do need to come back to it because the algorithm is an ugly thing and. Yeah. stops pushing your content <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um that's kind of just what i do nice. the music the writing mm -hmm. reading movie theater food type stuff mm -hmm. and then i and the content creation so yeah um i'm even playing around now since i've got this thing that lets me um if my friends are willing capture their voice um, and then I don't need them per se to be present to do something. That's my one foray in the AI I'm looking at. Uh, I want to produce like a online novella, but audio, like like a rate like the old radio programs where you're not seeing people but you're hearing the voices and it tells the story. I think I'm gonna step into that next. So nice. That sounds interesting. I love the sound of that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Um, that. Yeah, I mean, in terms for me, like hobbies wise. Music is a big thing for me. Like, like as I said previously, I, I'm, there's never a time where I'm not listening to music unless I'm busy recording something. There's always some form of music on. Um, I mean, music's helped me a lot over over the years and things like that. So, like, it's a big, it's a big thing for me. Um, I, I I enjoy going out for a walk. I enjoy. Uh, I I make a I make a day every Saturday to go out for a walk. 
um, you know, just just to get a bit of fresh air, clear the clear the mind off from the week and things like that. That's super important for me. Um, golf is is something I like to do. Granted, the weather's shite at the moment, so it's not really playable because the courses are all waterlogged. Um, but I mean, it's one of those things where it's just, uh, when when the season comes around, it's it's perfectly good. Um, I enjoy reading. Um, and again, just making content is is a big thing for me as well. Like I enjoy making the content. That that's that's another hobby of mine that I enjoy doing. Like always trying to think of ideas. What what you know? What would I want to see and all that kind of stuff. So um, cooking, I enjoy. I, I love cooking. It's one of, I, I enjoy that. It's you know I enjoy cooking for my family and things like that. That's a big thing. Um, yeah, I mean. There's, there's a lot of things that, that I don't want to put on online that I like to do. Um, obviously, you need that time for yourself, and I feel like that is that is important. Absolutely. Um, you know, to you know, step away from the screens, and be like, okay. Um, but yeah, I I I I, uh, I I think that's a, that's a good that's a good thing to have. Um, and and I mean, keeping yourself busy. I, you mentioned you you know you 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 know you've got three channels running. You're doing all your studies and things. Very busy, man. I I appreciate that. I I, I too like to keep busy. So there's always there's like I I always have a a set kind of like things that I want to do every day. So like today, I sat down to actually like record, do some editing, all that kind of stuff. And then yesterday I was you know I went out for a walk, did a little bit of um, recording yesterday as well in the evening and things like that. So um you know all that kind of stuff so it's good to have that balance i think so yeah um absolutely there is one thing and i think roger will he he brought this up roger would want me to ask this but he is very interested in all of your collectibles at the back behind you and everything um i mean i i i have seen a lot of them and i can see the pops i can see all of that I'm a big fan of pops myself. Like I have, I have, I have loads like that you can't see. Um, but like, what started the collection? It, it, do you have more that's off screen in like a a, a shelter somewhere that's like? <laughs> so so growing up, I'd be, you know, I feel uh, his tastes have influenced a lot. Um, mm. My genre come from him music came from him mm-hmm. uh, and just growing up and always seeing bulls and he was more of a horror based collector so yeah. i would always grow up with, um chucky doll's house and stuff when i'd go visit mm-hmm. um you can't see it but if i move the camera a little bit i've got chucky stuff up there too oh nice nice there is yeah plenty of camera that i've got um yeah i've got a whole setup kind of in front of me where um I've got Nintendo 64 set up there and I've got all these other collectibles that range all above me. Nice. Um, and I've got a locker full here. There's another shelf there. There's a cupboard over there full of stuff. <laughs> and then I've still got stuff on order yeah. in that um, <laughs> got a friend that's kind of storing in store for me because I can't bring it in yet. So yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it started, with, I feel, just um, a couple of pop vinyls because mm-hmm. I really got into pop vinyls, but I got into them late. So yeah. Um, uh, it was a few years after they started getting produced that I was like, hey, these things look kind of cool. I'm going to start collecting. Mm-hmm. And then um, I turned to more gaming stuff. So I've got um, a lot of PS2, PS1, Nintendo 64 stuff. Yeah. Um, and then as that kind of, it just expanded out to different things. And like if I had pops for a certain line, and then I saw action figures for the same line. I'm like, well, I can get into that because I've got the pops to match. So yeah. it's a it's a very slippery slope. It um, is, it is. <laughs> um, and and it's a it's a very expensive slope to fall mm-hmm. down as well. Absolutely. Um, but it's it's an extension of myself. Um, yeah. I'm constantly shifting things over here. Yeah. Um, with the Suicide Squad series I'm doing, mm-hmm. you kind of get a better angle because I situate the camera in a different position so you can see more things behind me. Yeah. Um, but I'm always actively thinking about what to have kind of over here to, to push. Um, obviously, I love 
putting out stuff that my kids make and, and yeah. showing um you know that you know i always say to them i oh, you know i'm gonna have that on camera whenever i do a video to show you know how much i love having that there yeah um and i've got a lot more stuff from them to to put out but um yeah uh i don't think this collecting will stop it's just at the moment it's a process of um <laughs> not having the room to to store anything so it's kind yeah. of temporarily on hold but um <laughs> But yeah, I've I've definitely got a lot that uh, you can't see. But I'm oh, yeah. thinking it, there might come a time where I dedicate a a little video to just doing a little bit of a wander around the room, just mm. to kind of show everything I do have. Because the things I have range from current stuff to um, uh, stuff that I collected as a kid, mm -hmm. um, but then grew away from, but now I've gotten back into bringing back into my life again, yeah. just for that nostalgic feel. Yeah. Um, and like some of my prized possessions are all locked away in here, so they can't get touched, but I've got like, um, uh, action figures from the Resident Evil, like first couple of games that are oh, still wow. in there, like in their card, perfect condition, all put away. Um, I've got like original, uh, Metal Gear Solid figures still in their boxes oh, as wow. well, so I kind of like to keep those behind lock and key. Yeah, of um, course, yeah. Because of how pricey they are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, it's just another extension of my of my my passion. I feel. Yeah. Um, I feel I'm very visual with how I want to display myself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, especially being on camera. You want to kind of give some sort of indication to people that are watching the stuff you do. Um, who, yeah, like who you, you are. are. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now that I've got my bed in sight, I always actively try to make sure I've got my bed made because the one thing you don't want to do is put content out and have a messy bed behind you. So I'm always like actively <laughs> now thinking you gotta, gotta make sure you make your bed before we start. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I just I just love it. It's just another passion of mine. When I when I fall into something passionately, I fall into it deeply. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you both mentioned you love cooking. That's ex another extension of myself. I love as well. I love to cook. Um, mm -hmm. I love to feed people. Yeah. Um, you know, when you when you find something you're passionate about, you should really cling to that because I feel we get so caught up on on shortcomings and things that we can improve on that we don't really take the time to truly value what we can offer and yeah. what we do offer. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like to lend myself to those experiences and, you know, just, um, some people might not think that, you know, an adult man, you know, playing with toys or collecting toys is, is, is fascinating. But to me, that's just an extension of, um, growing up. I, I had the best upbringing that I, that I had, mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I never had a lavish life where you could go out and, you know, get everything you wanted. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, sometimes you went without. So now as an adult, now that you're in a position to get those things, it's almost like I'm rewarding my childhood self. If yeah. that makes any amount of sense. So, oh, yeah, so yeah that that, makes... that's about my collecting journey. Definitely. Um, nice. it's something I love. Yeah, most definitely. I, I can totally agree. Like, um, you know. I, I we we had a, we had a good upbringing with, with with the terms of everything, but like in terms of like collecting things, it is certainly rewarding yourself for like yes, like I can get these now. I I can aff I can I can afford it. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it. Um, for me personally, I'm I'm quite picky with what I get. Um, in terms of like my collectibles in general, um, I don't know why. I'm just very specific with like what I have out on my shelf. Um, but I still have more in stories that it, that it, that I that I don't have um, on on like display and things like that. I have like posters and God knows what else. But uh, I I totally get it. I totally get it. It is um you know it is an extension of yourself and who you are and you know it it makes makes you who you are. You know what I mean. Um, so follow up question: What is the most expensive collectible that you have? okay um i gotta think here because i had i had some pop vinyls just sitting around from like a wwe live show that came out here like mm. years ago mm. and i didn't even have them on display they were just tucked away and i ended up selling them because i i didn't realize how much they were worth yeah um i do have a couple of a couple of things the probably the most ex expensive pop vinyl i've got is my captain spaulding pop and i feel that only uh gained 
value because um, Sid Haig passed away. Mm. So obviously, if you collect stuff where the person portraying that character passes, yeah. um, the value becomes a lot higher, especially if it's an older kind of collectible that you cannot get in recirculation. 100%. Um, so yeah. I think that pop alone um, is close to four or five hundred dollars australian for a pop. nice and to think that you pay twenty dollars for that pop when you buy it yeah um but i've got i've got tons of stuff um i've got like old wcw figures over there i'm sure they're probably worth something mm. now um they're just very eclectic i've got like um mighty morphin power rangers stuff in there the 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 uh middle gear solid stuff yeah yeah is probably about three hundred dollars a piece nice. so um that's why I try to keep everything under lock and key because I don't want anybody breaking in here and ransacking me because there's a lot of uh, yeah, that, there's that. a lot of money to be made if they if they successfully do so. So oh yeah, that um, is that is very yeah, true. I, um, I don't kind of care about the monetary value of things and where they're at because if I do bring them into my collection and it's something I want to keep, um, it's something that doesn't really bother me all too much oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. obviously if they do if, if they if they do gain value mm -hmm. then it's just something that down the line that um you know it gets passed on to my kids and then they can do with whatever if it's stuff that ends up gaining value and then they can benefit from that when the time comes for yeah. it to be passed on to mm -hmm. them they can they can do so um and that's part of why i collect as well because now it might not make sense to some but i feel a lot of the stuff i do collect um given that you don't actively see it as much like all my lord of the rings stuff or the mm. small soldier stuff which you definitely wouldn't see in this day and age yeah or, oh yeah yeah all my x-men stuff up there or the street sharks that i collect mm. all the walking dead stuff um you know those are lines that are only going to get more valuable with time oh 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah um you know takes up my space now but puts money in my kids pockets when they're older yeah and they want to you know pass that stuff on or if they want to keep it and um at the end of the day i'm always trying to set up avenues to assist them as best as i can um especially mm -hmm. for when i'm not here anymore yeah um so yeah that's kind of like a driving force as well mm -hmm. um but i'm always like looking out for like even cheap stuff like going out to like um goodwills and stuff like that trying mm. to pick up you know little bits and pieces here and there like i i don't care if something in my collection is worth one dollar or a hundred dollars if i love it i'm going to collect it oh so, yeah yeah totally yeah. totally agree totally agree yeah that that's the same with me like the back here these these plates are like um like they're, they're they're valuable i i love them i pick them up for i think like i think honestly i think they pick them up for like 60 quid these are worth like quite a lot like i think they were around these were like one of the last things that were produced when walt was alive um so I have a promotional poster for Song of the South that I picked up for cheap. That's worth a pretty penny. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what else? Oh man, I don't even know. I have, I don't know. I have some, I have some crazy stuff. Um, but again, it's not about the monetary stuff. It's about I, that I like it. I'm going to collect it. That that's that's yep. you know that's what that's what makes it. Um, and like you say, it's an extension of yourself and all that kind of stuff. So at the end of the day that's what it is um doug any Absolutely. questions i think doug's on mute yeah doug you think doug doesn't realize he's you're, on mute. you're mute you're muted <laughs> sorry i, said <laughs> I just wanted to take the time to thank oh. you for actually being with us you know taking the time out of your no, schedule your your life to uh to sit down with us and mm -hmm. talk with us it's been I, a real pleasure i appreciate man. yeah it's been a pleasure I, man i appreciate uh the opportunity to to do this you know mm -hmm. i've um as i said i love networking and collaborating and the chance to be able to kind of give a little bit of insight into my life as a content creator um it's been it's been an experience i really appreciate it yeah yeah totally man totally um, yeah, it's, it's great that you, 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 know, you took the time out of your day to do to do this. We've been wanting to do this for a while, like we said. Um, so, but yeah, I, I'm super, super looking forward to it. To super, I'm glad that we got to do it. Super excited that we've done it. Um, let me think. I'm trying to think. Uh, I do have another question, actually. 
Um, in terms of your yes. um, like handle for YouTube, where did that come from? Like, obviously, it, 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 so I've... it's a take on Godzilla, is it not? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I've gone under a transitional shift. So originally when I first started gaming and gamer handles became a thing, mm -hmm. um, I had the gamer handle fueled by darkness. Okay, um, but that I sounds felt... epic. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah it, it does. But when it came to um, wanting to upload to YouTube, I felt that I needed um, a name that would resonate a little bit more Um <clears throat> as a as its own entity yeah um and i went by our god zero for a long period of time yeah i remember you um, I remember you did but yeah. i had i had some people uh reach out to me uh with concerns that maybe um that name wasn't really uh appropriate for some mm. um particular races that yeah. felt maybe could be perceived as a as a racist kind of thing even though it was never created for that intent yeah um, of course yeah. Didn't, i don't create things to upset people like that so mm -hmm. um and for the most part from that our god zero people were just calling me zero anyway yeah um, all the people i was gaming with were just using that as a nickname um people in my in my life here um, yeah. in real life you know ex external from the camera yeah um still call me zero as well yeah um so when it came for the brand shift which happened probably close to two years ago now um, has it been that long already wow. was just a, yeah yeah so zero was a was obviously a an easy switch because it was of something course, that yeah. everyone was calling me anyway yeah um but i kept that gaming kaiju yeah um moniker with it because i feel zero on its own is a little bit too ambiguous of a name it doesn't really direct you to what the content is about of um, course yeah. and maybe the mystery could drive people to checking your channel out maybe but i felt yeah. having gaming kaiju there still kept links to the godzilla kind of aspect of things yeah um because godzilla was the mascot for my channel since since you know dog years ago yeah yeah um but keeping that and you know having the essence of this is who i am but this is what i do kind of mm -hmm. smash together yeah um that's where that that handle come from um the argos zero name was great because there was people that i was like random people i would game with in lobbies that yeah. they'd come across the name and they thought it was so hilarious that i captured <laughs> it on the camera just dying of laughter um and when i started getting that kind of feedback it was like this is something i could push as a brand yeah but then I think the shift happened because of branding. You know, I eventually mm -hmm. want to be in a position where I can make merchandise um, yeah. and stuff like that. And I feel it was better to do that shift prior to all of that being in the works. So yeah, of no, course, yeah. Um, misconceptions or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's how we got to where we are today. And obviously I shortened that on my gaming handle to Zero TGK, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just just in short form. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th I feel this is this is the identity that I've been I've been wanting. I think it's the perfect kind of amalgamation, as I said, of who I am and what I do. Yeah. Um, if that shifts in future, who knows? But I mean, even my reaction channel is known as Zero Reacts, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. they even know me over on that channel as Zero. Mm -hmm. Um, on the AFL podcast, I'm going to go by my real name, but yeah. I'm also going to you know mention that you know some of us might know me as Zero because of the content I've put out before. So of course, yeah. Um, it, it's funny that something as simple as a gamer tag can become so synonymous with yourself in the real world. Um, oh yeah, yeah. That I've even had. I've even had people in different Facebook groups that I am outside of YouTube, like when I'm using my real name on social media, mm -hmm. um, recognize me from the content I do. And they call me Zira in those chats and in those groups. Yeah. So, you know, having that identification in the real world is, um, is really affirming that what I've, what I'm doing and what I've done, um, has cemented me in where I really want to be. Nice. Nice. Awesome, man. Yeah. It's good that you've, you know, that you've solidified that name for yourself as like a nickname. I feel like once you've done that, you've kind of like made it a little bit like people know you for that name, you know, yeah. and it, it kind of like creates that entity of yourself. Like it gives you that persona of like the camera personality and everything like that. 
Um, but yeah, man, that, that's that's awesome. Um, I do have one more question, but I need the bathroom, so I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> that's uh, fine, because I'll actually quickly take a bathroom break while um while you do as well. Yeah, and we can come back if you'd like. Perfect. All right, beautiful. Oh sh! My computer, my laptop. And that's exciting. Everything. Well, I'll take a break. And come back. Okie dokie. Alrighty, I have just one more question, I think, and then I think we'll be good. I'm here, I'm here, I'm just lurking. No, it's all good, man, it's all good. Present. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. I'm just thinking, um, I've, I've only got really one more question for, for Zira, so I think I might ask this unless yeah. you have any more, and then we can... Um, nah, I think you asked your final question. Like my thanking him, I was pretty much done with my questions. We, yeah. we think we've had overall a good panel. Yeah, we have. It's we've been had, we've had good stuff. Yeah, it's been nice. It's been really good. I've really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, so when he comes back, I will ask the final question, and then we can uh, potentially get it all wrapped up and everything. It's a shame Roger couldn't come. I know he was he was probably he's probably sleeping, but it's uh it's a shame he couldn't make it. I know he was looking forward to having him and everything. But life. Okay. Oof. Plus I need to get ready for work tomorrow. Oof. Uh, cause it's almost it's almost eleven here now, so. Whew. Looks like we have zero back. Yay. I'm back. Hey, nice, nice. We're all 
We're all ready to go. Um, okay, so I was just saying to Doug, I only have really one question left um, before we wrap this up. And I just want to say a huge thank you again for taking the time out of your day. Um, you know, waking up early and <laughs> doing what you, you know, uh, joining us here and everything. Um, so my final question, Zira, is what has been your favourite series to produce on any of your channels? Oh, that's a great question. Um, really love Cyberpunk 20, despite the uh, the globalized hate that that game got. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I feel I must have been a version of that game from the... Because I played it on the PS5 um, day one release mm-hmm. and went into one bug the entire play. Oh, yeah. Um, so... I'm incredibly lucky. Uh, I think, though, my my favourite would have to be a combination of uh, Batman Arkham Asylum and Batman Arkham City. Nice. Only because if you go and watch those videos, instead of having a uh, theme play, mm-hmm. I was doing little uh, Batman-based comedy skits to open up videos. <laughs> and something i'd never done before but mm-hmm. something that um there was one era i didn't do it and everybody in the comment section dragged me for not having that in the start of the video <laughs> so that was just again another extension of me and my personality uh, yeah because i love having fun mm-hmm. on camera yeah uh, and if i have the chance to go absolutely stupid with it poking fun at myself oh. or someone else i i relish the opportunity to to do so yeah 100%, 100%. Um, so i'd say pro- those two only because the creative process of um kind of setting those up and looking at what i was going to do and, and there's even one where my son my son in one of those with like, he's wearing a um a joker mask and we do a little bit of banter between the two of us <laughs> um and i slap the mask off his face and like he really enjoyed Oh. Um, he really enjoyed like getting involved with that fact yeah. so i think that's probably um why it was so special to me as well mm-hmm. um but just being able to get my son involved in yeah. the content um he has openly been telling me he wants to um do youtube when he's older and oh bless him i'm a firm believer of letting letting children run their own paths and if they want to do something you know backing them up by doing it oh 100 um, he's always yeah. like Whenever, whenever, whenever he's with me, he'll always say, "You know, oh, can can we do a YouTube video?" He'll be Aww. playing pretend off his own, saying that he's YouTubing. Oh, you know? so, bless him! Um, I I love I love to feel that I'm doing is influencing him positively as well. Mm-hmm. Um, my daughter's still a little bit too young to kind of process that, but um, yeah. I'm hoping when she grows up, she has an appreciation for what daddy's doing as well most definitely most yeah definitely. i think definitely the best which makes me realize i still have to do um i still have to play batman arkham knight so that probably like a, a future thing that i don't yeah definitely i've been to but um i think it was also my it's a game that is so it's held in so high regard for myself i feel yeah. the batman arkham franchise um is one of the best franchises we've had um in gaming especially more oh, modern gaming 100 percent 100 percent Especially with the backlash that Suicide Squad's been getting because it's not an Arkham game. So that just tells you how much the Arkham verse is uh is valued by yeah. the by the fan base. So uh-huh. yeah, I'd probably say those two. If I had to pick um yeah, as for the retro stuff, I I I'm not a hundred percent sure. Probably going back and playing the Resident Evil games again mm. um were my favourite to do, only because growing up um my love for gaming didn't just come from me being a gamer but me a viewer yeah um because a lot of my earlier experiences were um seeing my dad and my uncle um game together and, you know they'd have work this morning but they'd go down to the local video store hire out a video game and they'd still be you know my auntie would be calling at three morning finding out where my uncle is because they're on the tv playing um, you know silent hill yeah. the resident evil metal gear solid um you know so probably have them to thank as well my love for gaming because yeah. growing up i used to just love 
being a viewer, sitting yeah. back and taking in what they were doing. And obviously when I was old enough, it was my turn to then pick up the controller and I already had that that seed so myself of um my love for gaming so yeah. it made transition from just being able to watch somebody to then playing myself so much greater so yeah probably the resident evil stuff for the retro oh that's stuff. awesome man that's awesome yeah some some amazing choices there as well to be fair like that's a good way to uh i think there's a good way to round it off um so yeah amazing thank you so much for joining us here thank you to doug for joining as well um and you only got one job left to do plug yourself Plug the crap out of yourself. Where can we find you? Plug the crap out of my... Well, you can find me on YouTube, Gaming Kaiju. Um, the channels can be accessed from that channel as well. Um, Zero Reacts, AFL Podcast, come to hip and shoulder. Um, both of those are there. Um, yeah, you can find me on Facebook, Zero the Gaming Kaiju. Um, on TikTok and Twitter, it's uh, Zero TGK. Um yeah, that, that's basically it. Um, I don't do Instagram. I've got one, but I don't do it. I feel that's probably another social media I need to plug in again. Yeah. Um, but I'm active, um, so feel free. And I've got a disc as well. Um, I can, you know, if you want links for that, we can, uh, when needed. But I do have a Discord. You can find that in also, actually, in any of the videos I up. Perfect. all those links to check out you want to hang out on a different form um it's all available you can add me on playstation you can add me on Nintendo switch um you know if i've got the the time to facilitate getting on gaming with people that want a game i'm always to that as well so so feel free to Oh, it broke. I don't know what happened. No, it's fine. It's all good. It was oh. kind of, it was lagging. <laughs> yep. No, all good. But yeah, feel free to go and check him out. I mean, 100%, you can't get the content anywhere else. Um, it, Zero has amazing some amazing content. stuff. Amazing content. 100%. Amazing stuff, man. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us here. Um, and thank you, everyone here, for joining, watching, and, and you know, being part of it, man. It was, it was super fun. Um, I'm so glad that we've got to do this and, um, you know, I, I can't wait to get this out onto the channel and everything and let people know who you're about, you know, what you're about and everything. See the man behind the channel and all that kind of stuff. So I appreciate it so much. Yep. Um, and thank you once again for everyone for joining us. Um, we will catch you next time over on the Home Away From YouTube channel. Uh, we'll see you later. Bye.